the Vegetarian Star Kit, which is a brochure magazine that Ritz and Cradles puts out. We'll be talking a little bit about Ritz and Cradles in a minute, and here's a copy of not the latest Compassionate Living, which is a magazine that talks a bit more about what Mercy for Animals has been up to um, lately. Great. Um, so before I start, um, I just want to thank uh, our organizers one more time, Rocky, uh, Daniel, and Anthony, who are currently uh, moving our food up into the club room so that we can all enjoy lunch. Let's just give them all a round of applause. Thank you very much. Um, and even though they may kill me if they knew I said it, uh, today is Daniel's birthday, and yesterday was Anthony's birthday. So when you see them, give them a hug, tell them happy birthday, but don't tell them that I told you that information. <laughs> um, I don't know, bring a cake. <laughs> um, all right, so this weekend has been a really incredible weekend uh, discussing critical animal theory, uh, and how it relates to so many other social justice issues and talking a lot of theory. Um, and today, as a day of workshops, um, I think we're talking about how to bring this knowledge of theory um, with us into life uh, to be advocates for animals. And the great workshop we just sat through um, began to do that and was, was really great. And I'm going to be giving a presentation today um, called Effective Vegan Advocacy. It's a presentation that Mercy for Animals has. Um, and this presentation has 10 tips uh, on how to be effective advocates for animals. Um, first, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Alan Dair. I'm a junior here at Vassar College. I'm a biochemistry major, um, most likely a math minor as well. Um, and I have had the wonderful opportunity to lead BARC, Vassar and Lorette's Coalition, as both treasurer and president. Um, and organize many campaigns and work with incredible fellow activists. Um, I was raised vegetarian in Rockland County, New York, about an hour south of here, um, during my freshman year here. I saw a documentary um, that Mark held a screening for called Foul Play, which was about the egg industry, which I had no idea about. Um, as soon as my eyes were opened to the horrors that exist in the egg industry as well as the meat industry, it was no longer something I knew I could continue to support. So I went vegan, um, and then wanting to immediately take action, uh, I interned with Mercy for Animals uh, that winter break. Next summer I interned with FARM, Farm Animal Rights Movement. And this past summer I had an incredible opportunity to be hired by Mercy for Animals to temporarily run the Texas office um, where I uh, coordinated volunteers and local interns and organized uh, a lot of outreach events. Um, before I delve into this presentation, I added a few things um, that I wanted to show you guys to help make, to personalize the presentation a little bit more, make it a little more relevant to um, students for Critical Animal Studies and what we're doing here this weekend. So if you'll indulge me, um, I'd like to show you a video that Mercy for Animals came out with about a month and a half ago called My Story, which I think um, you'll realize soon why I'm showing it. Um, I do want to issue a little disclaimer, a trigger warning. It's a three and a half minute video. The last 30 seconds are graphic images and videos of an investigation at a dairy farm. And I struggled for the past day and a half about whether I was going to show those last 30 seconds or not. Um, and I'm deciding to show it because I think it's really important that we know why, what it is we're talking about, right? So we need to be able to know what, basically what I just said, but um, if you want to look away, close your eyes, walk out of the room, whatever, totally understandable, um, about three minutes in, that's where that's going to start. Does that sound okay with anyone? I don't want to impose. All right. Tears are 
filling up their glasses, no expression, no expression, hide my head, I want to drown my sorrow, no tomorrow, no tomorrow, and I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad, the dreams in which I'm dying Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. So armed with the knowledge that adopting a healthy vegan lifestyle can save dozens of land animals a year, help protect the environment, and encourage others to live a healthy lifestyle, um, you may be eager to want to share that information with others. And rightly so. By convincing just one other person to adopt a healthy vegan lifestyle, we can double the impact we have with our own personal veganism in that moment. And to me, that's what makes activism so, for lack of a better word, addictive, right? So knowing this abuse happens, I can choose to not consume these products. But in the moment that I pass out a vegetarian star kit like you have in front of you to one person and encourage them to consider their food choices a little more and encourage them to either reduce or eliminate some of the animal products that are currently in their diet, we can double the impact. So it's an exponential impact we can have. Um, and that's why it's so important that when we're going to engage in advocacy, we engage in effective animal advocacy because it's the